I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ market site. Travel websites could be seeing some competition from an unexpected place. In FDA approval is lifting Neos Therapeutics, while its long-acting ADHD drug be a game changer. And the founder of Aereo is taking on broadband. Can Starry disrupt the industry? Welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. Expedia's stock plummeted on a threat from Airbnb. The Wall Street firm Goldman Sachs says the Seattle-based travel website along with Priceline and TripAdvisor could be hurt as travelers use alternatives like the home rental site Airbnb. The firm also mentioned hotel consolidation, which gives them more flexibility on pricing against the travel sites. Well, Snyder's Lance announced that it has a meeting date set for the shareholders to vote on improving the recently announced acquisition of Diamond Foods. This announcement signals completion of customary reviews of the transaction by the FTC and the SEC. A meeting date of February 26, 2016 was set. Bob Evans Farms will serve only cage-free eggs by 2025. It joins a long list of restaurant chains that include Starbucks and McDonald's. Bob Evans says it uses more than 100 million eggs each year in its dishes. Now Bob Evans shares are down more than 30 percent in the past year. Next, our Broadcasting Group has finally inked its $4.6 billion deal to buy Media General after six months of negotiations. The two companies announced definitive agreements after Virginia-based Media General and Des Moines, Iowa-based Meredith terminated their previous murder of merger agreement. Media General will pay Meredith $60 million and negotiation opportunities for the purchase of certain broadcast and digital assets. The new company expects to generate annual revenue above $2.3 billion. It will comprise 171 television stations in 100 markets and will reach about 39% of all U.S. TV households. Well, lots of small cap companies making news today. Here's a look in today's small cap wrap. Core Labs revenue beat estimates for the fourth quarter. Crown Castle has named a new CEO. Insight halts phase two CRC sub-study for a lack of efficacy. In Vincent's earnings per share matched in revenue beat estimates. And Lamb Research revenue did trail estimates. Mellanox fourth quarter earnings beat handily the estimates. Radius Health has reached a pact with Novartis on a breast cancer drug. Sandisk fourth quarter revenue was better than expected. ServiceNow's misses its billings forecast for the fourth quarter. And Teradyne uh, had its revenue exceed estimates. Silicon Graphics forecast came in below estimates. And Skechers says an ITC, an International Trade Commission decision, is due in the New Balance and Converse case. While the FDA has approved NEOS' long-acting ADHD drug, it's the first of its kind to win U.S. approval. The drug is called Adzinus XRODT. It is approved for the treatment of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder in patients ages 6 and older. Now, the drug is a orally disintegrating tablet and a longer-acting version of amphetamine, a commonly prescribed ADHD drug. ADHD is a condition with symptoms such as poor concentration, hyperactivity, and learning difficulties. Our Silicon Valley reporter, Remy Blair, will have more on NEOS coming up later in the show. Whole Logic posted stronger than expected first quarter results as its U.S. business turned in double digit revenue growth. Sales in the U.S. jumped 12 percent. Now, some analysts have been bullish about the medical diagnostics company with extended growth expected because of high satisfaction with Hologic's diagnostics machines. And the CEO, Steve McMillan, helped shepherd the company through rocky times when he took over in 2013, quelling pressure from corporate activists Carl Icahn and Ralph Whitworth. Last year, the maker of medical equipment said it was focusing on growing overseas, uh, the source of some 25 percent of revenue so far, though currency headwinds may offset those plans. Company officials said the push was driven in part by the bite of U.S. taxes. And in fact, internationally, Hologic operates mainly in Western Europe. Neos Therapeutics cheering an FDA approval of its ADHD drug. What makes the approved drug different from other treatments on the market? Hi, Jane. Shares of Neos Therapeutics are rallying 30 percent. The FDA approved the company's treatment for ADHD. At Zenis XRODT is a long-acting drug approved for patients six years and older. Now, the treatment is an extended-release orally disintegrating tablet and the only one available for the treatment of ADHD. It relies on the company's proprietary extended-release technology. Now, according to the National Institute of Mental Health, ADHD is one of the most common childhood disorders and can continue through adolescence and into adulthood. The average age of onset is seven years old.
In the U.S., ADHD affects about 4% of adults age 18 years and older in a given year. It affects 9% of children age 13 to 18 years, and boys are four times at risk compared to girls. Now, ADHD symptoms include hyperactivity, poor concentration, and learning difficulties. The innovation for treating ADHD is good news for patients. On the heels of its milestone, when will Neos Therapeutics ADHD drug be launching? Neos Therapeutics plans to educate healthcare providers immediately. The company expects to launch and ship product in the second quarter of this year. The extended release drug will be available in six dosage strengths. Because the tablet is an orally disintegrating one and requires only one tablet per day, it may be easier to take for children who dislike swallowing pills. It is bioequivalent to FDA-approved Adderall XR, which is an extended-release mixed amphetamine salt capsule. And what is the outlook for the Texas-based pharma company? Neos Therapeutics says it plans to develop other treatment options with its technology platforms. It is investigating its proprietary extended-release drug delivery technology in ODT and extra liquid suspension formulations of amphetamine as well as methyl fendiate. It does hope to deliver a portfolio of drugs in various uh, dosage forms. Now, Neos has a marketed product called Tucionex. It is used to treat cough and lung symptoms caused by the common cold or allergies. It does contain an antihistamine and hydrocodone. The FDA's latest approval is a milestone for Neos Therapeutics. Back in 2013, the FDA rejected the drug, but the company resubmitted its NDA last summer with new data from a study. Now that the treatment has been approved, RBC Capital sees an adjusted per share value of $22. In midday trade on Thursday, Neos is eyeing 13 bucks a share. Guys, I got the jerseys. Yeah. El Nino. Aquí. Spray Dan. Oh, yeah. Don Ovan. I think that's me. You guy. It's 40 bucks. Can you cover that? I'll send it to you right now. Done. OK, got it. So Hattrick Rick, he's the best player on our team. You get the ball, you give it to him. Great. Rick. Ooh. On your phone, online, on the go, Wells Fargo makes it easy to get banking done. All right, Don, you're on. Nope, just kidding. Doug, you've been staring at that for a while, huh? Listen, TD Ameritrade has former floor traders to help walk you through that complex trade, so you'll be confident enough to do what you want. I'll pull up your number. <laughs> Blammo. Let's get those guys on the horn. <laughs> Ooh. Looks like it is time to upgrade your phone, Douglas. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. Fight, fight. Come on, fight. It took tennis legend Serena Williams, fencing champion Tim Morehouse, and the world-famous Rockettes years to master their craft. But it took them only moments to master paying bills at Chase.com, depositing checks at Chase ATMs, and transferring funds on the mobile app. Technology designed for you so you can easily master the way you bank. Graham Brown is in Europe with the latest on small cap action there. Graham. Today we're looking at a vibrant market that we have not really covered extensively before. The Scandinavian small cap market, listed under the Nordic NASDAQ heading, and in particular what is known as the first North market, which is similar in function to the London AIM. The Scandinavians are a mixed bunch, EU members but not Euro users, Sweden and Denmark, EU member and Euro user but talkably than the Euro Finland, and Norway which is neither in the EU and therefore doesn't use the Euro. 
There are a number of world-class technology companies in the region, uh, particularly in uh, high-tech, biotech and uh, pharma. And today we're looking at a biopharma example. So today we're looking at a Swedish clinical stage biopharma company, Hansa Medical, focused on rare conditions and diseases. Uh, back to the orphan disease area again, with a focus on uh, immunodularity enzymes, I'm not sure what they are, but I'm sure they know, for prevention of transplant rejection and the treatment of autoimmune con conditions. Based in Lund, Sweden, with a board of directors with long pharma and biotech experience, a small and innovative team, only 18 employees, and a first-rate global scientific network within transplantation and immunology, the company has an innovative and promising pipeline. First of all, uh, something called IDES, candidate drug in several phase two trials at the moment in kidney transplantation. ENDOS, a potential as a therapeutic in autoimmune disease and hypersensitivity. And HB assay, a diagnostic assay to predict severe septis. The lead project is an antibody degrading enzyme the mention called IDES that is aimed at facilitating transplants. Several studies include a phase two study in uh, transplant patients expected to be completed in 2016 and importantly our well-known orphan drug designation is expected. IDS has several potential benefits in terms of efficacy, uh, swiftness, uh, bringing uh, rapid results, and a single dose treatment, which means that there are fewer hospitalization days for the, tr for the uh, transplant uh, patients. Uh, there is strong support for further investigation of the drug for desensitization of plants patients before transplants take place and clinical studies are focused on uh, that uh, area of desensitization before kidney transplants and the treatment of antibody mediated graft rejection uh, and beyond transplants they have a I think they have identified also other th therapeutic options uh, in the area of neurology nephrology and hematology other projects include ENDOS, uh, which is an antibody modulating bacterial enzyme uh, in preclinical development. Uh, and they believe that ENDOS has great potential as a novel therapy for antibody mediated autoimmune diseases. And finally, HBSA is a novel diagnostic method developed and patented by Hansa Medical to help predict severe sepsis in patients with infectious disease uh, symptoms. Hundreds of thousands of patients die globally each year due to severe sepsis as a comp uh, complication to infections, uh, which is an expensive international problem, both in terms of casualties and treatments of the hundreds of thousand cases each year. In the uh, EU, it's estimated that costs relating to the treatment of sepsis amount to something around 8 billion uh, euros annually. So this it offers uh, the opportunity to predict uh, ongoing sepsis and treat it. They've licensed it to Axis Shield Diagnostics and it then generates royalties back to Hansa Medical with the potential of 3 million assays per year in the US and EU and possibly more than that in China. A novel and promising pipeline targeting rare autoimmune and autoimmune diseases uh, with a strategy to lead, get their lead project developed uh, IDS to the market and commercialize it directly in the US and EU with its own sales force. So a possible strong player. And that's uh, it for today from Small Cap Nation Europe. This is Graham Brown signing off.
Everyone works hard for a reason. Working together, we can help you prepare financially for when two becomes three. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. You want to be the best investor you can be. You want to cut through the noise of an overwhelming amount of analysis. You want the insights that will help you decide which ideas to execute and which to leave behind. You want your trades executed in one second or less guaranteed and routed with institutional quality technology. Look no further. Open an account and find more of the expertise you need to be a better investor. When I got the phone call that we had received the grant, I held my breath. To have a program like this is a big reward. Being a Chase Mission Main Street grant recipient is a game changer. One of the biggest surprises in starting a small business is the number of hours we should work for the first 20 years. <laughs> One of the great things about this grant is that it is going to let us invest in some additional inventories. It's going to allow this business to go to the next level. Being a recipient of this grant, we can't be thankful enough. It's a dream come true, and I'm still in awe. The FCC wants to make it easier for consumers to buy and use their own set-top boxes. It's big business for cable companies, so is the FCC thinking out of the box? The FCC announced a proposal that will boost consumer choices for cable set-top boxes. The agency's chairman says measures will be introduced, ones that would allow cable and satellite subscribers to use the set-top box of their own choosing. So instead of being forced to rent one directly from a provider, consumers may be free, but only if the FCC's cable ruling passes. It is a big industry. Set-top box rentals bring in over $19 billion a year for the cable and satellite companies. The FCC could help subscribers unlock the set-top box and shell out less money. If this ruling goes through, tech companies would cheer the move, while cable companies would lose out. There are reports that telecom and media companies are creating a coalition to oppose the plan. On the topic of cable and broadband, the founder of the now-defunct Aereo introduced his new startup. How will Starry take on the broadband industry? Starry is Chaitanya Kanujia's latest startup. The founder is back, and this time his startup will offer cheaper, high-speed wireless internet service. Starry will utilize high-frequency millimeter electromagnetic airwaves along with proprietary technology. With Starry Beams installed on city rooftops, it will broadcast its frequency and deliver connectivity to the hubs called Starry Points. Those points will sit outside a user's window and deliver a connection. Now, Starry aims to bring Wi-Fi access at speeds faster than broadband. Just plug in the small device and receive internet over a wireless connection. Boston will be the first beta market with testing kicking off this summer. Expect more expansion plans to be announced this spring. Starry pricing has yet to be disclosed, but promises no data caps. Starry is also building routers that can be used independent of ISPs. Now, Starry Station is a device with a touchscreen interface. It allows for tracking and monitoring of network devices. It will retail for $350 for this sleek device. And users can install parental controls and eventually add blocking technology. And Aereo shut down after it lost the battle against broadcasters in Supreme Court. Could a fight with industry incumbents be looming with Starry? We all remember Aereo. The New York-based startup was an attempt to turn the television market on its head. The system of tiny antenna were set up around the country, and Aereo subscribers could stream broadcast shows via the internet to mobile devices while away from home. Now, Aereo did not intend to share the fees it collected from its users with industry incumbents. In a legal war that rose all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, Aereo lost its case. As for Starry, it will need to build infrastructure and a network of base stations, and that will require a pretty penny and negotiating station locations. That will be easier than digging up roads. The founder of Starry is bracing for regulatory challenges, but says that there is growing demand for competition as well as other options. Guys, I got the jerseys. Yeah. El Nino. Aquí. Spray Dan. Oh, yeah. Don Ovan. I think that's me. You guy. It's 40 bucks. Can you cover that? I'll send it to you right now. Done. OK, got it. So Hattrick Rick, he's the best player on our team. You get the ball, you give it to him. Great. Rick. Ooh. On your phone, online, on the go, Wells Fargo makes it easy to get banking done. All right, Don, you're on. Nope, just kidding. 
Doug, <laughs> you've been staring at that for a while, huh? Listen, TD Ameritrade has former floor traders to help walk you through that complex trade, so you'll be confident enough to do what you want. I'll pull up your number. <laughs> Blammo. Let's get those guys on the horn. <laughs> Ooh. Looks like it is time to upgrade your phone, Douglas. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. Let's go, Serena. Fight, fight. Come on, fight. It took tennis legend Serena Williams, fencing champion Tim Morehouse, and the world-famous Rockettes years to master their craft. But it took them only moments to master paying bills at Chase.com, depositing checks at Chase ATMs, and transferring funds on the mobile app. Technology designed for you so you can easily master the way you bank. Well, lots of activity in today's buy, sell, hold action. First Financial was raised to a buy at Goldman Sachs. Hanby Financial raised to a strong buy at Raymond James. Knight Transport was cut to market perform at William Blair. Newmont Mining raised to a buy at Bank of America Merrill Lynch. Nimble Storage was raised to a buy at Maxim Group. Prosperity Bank shares raised to hold at Evercore. Rockwell Automation was cut to underperform at Bernstein. Sandusk raised to a buy at Mizuho. And ServiceNow cut to neutral at Mizuho. Wilshire Bank Corp was raised to outperform at Raymond James. Thanks for joining us on Small Cap Nation, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, check back for the latest news and research on smallcapnation.com, Facebook, and Twitter.